In today's video, I'm jumping off a new series on my channel called Muscle Building 101. Now I know it sounds basic, but that's exactly what I'm trying to go for here. I want to cover the fundamentals when it comes to building muscle, because I know a lot of you, just like myself, are always looking for ways to improve or get the most out of our workouts. Today I'm going to be covering a couple things when it comes to the fundamentals of building muscle. I'm going to be breaking it down into different sections. I'm going to talk about muscle protein synthesis. I'm going to be talking about how to trigger that. And I'm also going to be talking about how to ensure hypertrophy, AKA muscle building, as well as the relation with macronutrients, your diet, when it comes to these factors. I know it sounds like a lot of fancy information, but trust me, stick around and you're going to learn a lot that will help to maximize your workouts in the gym and get the most out of your training. And before we dive into the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and leave me comments down below regarding what else you'd like to see, whether it be with this series or another one. That way I can keep coming out with more content to help you guys in your workouts as I learn more about how to help mine. Now I want to shout out to my friend Sean. He was an old classmate of mine and he's a subscriber as well. He saw my content and he suggested that I make a video on this kind of stuff. And he was kind enough to go ahead and send tons of research that he did while he was in school. And that's a really big help. So cheers and let's dive into the video. So first things first, we're going to talk about muscle protein synthesis. Now you keep hearing me say muscle protein synthesis, but what is that exactly? Essentially, it's a process that occurs when a muscle has experienced micro trauma. When a muscle experiences micro trauma, that means that it has been broken down. Now, when this happens, the body signals to push more blood flow towards that region, towards that damaged muscle, and it's going to call upon components such as testosterone, growth hormone, and proteins or amino acids in order to repair and build that tissue back up. Now, one myth that you might hear out there is that muscle protein synthesis actually produces and creates more muscle fibers. That's not the case. All it's responsible for doing is rebuilding and fixing, fixing muscle tissue. So it's essentially the process that's going to get your muscles bigger. However, how do we trigger muscle protein synthesis? In order to create or stimulate muscle protein synthesis, you have to go through the preferred method of doing so, which is resistance training. Resistance training has been found to be the most effective way to create micro trauma to the muscle. In other words, meaning the most effective way to stimulate your protein synthesis. As it's damaging the muscle, this forces it to call upon testosterone and growth hormone in order to commence the process of synthesis. However, there's one thing that is required or that's very key in knowing is that muscle protein can only synthesize, in other words, come together and build if your body is in a positive muscle protein balance. So here's the catch. If you do the resistance training, your body stimulates muscle protein synthesis. However, the synthesis will not actually occur unless your protein balance is positive. And that can only occur as long as food is incorporated. In other words, in the absence of food, muscle protein balance will remain negative and you will stay in a catabolic state. Catabolic meaning you're in a breaking down state. Anabolic means you're building up. Anabolic is good, catabolic is bad. So we understand that resistance training is gonna create that response that stimulates muscle protein synthesis. However, it only lasts 24 to 48 hours after the workout. Now in those next 24 to 48 hours, the interaction with the food you consume is ultimately gonna determine the impact of your diet on hypertrophy. And hypertrophy means muscle building. So now we understand we need to stay in a positive muscle protein balance in order to maintain hypertrophy, an anabolic state of building, not a catabolic state of breaking down. The question is, is how do we ensure that we stay in hypertrophy? So now we understand that the key here is to create a positive muscle protein balance. And this is as simple as adding and subtracting. Muscle protein synthesis must be higher than muscle protein degradation. One thing your body does not produce is protein and amino acids. That comes from an external source. Now, putting two and two together here, it's clear that you need to consume protein in order to keep that muscle protein balance higher and ensure that you stay in a hypertrophic state. Consuming that protein will make sure that you accumulate a higher net protein balance in the body. So, how do we consume protein to ensure that we stay in that hypertrophic state for as long as possible? Now, I'm going to go opposite to what most people have already known about this, but consuming up to 50 grams of protein and up to 50 grams of carbohydrates pre-workout, so before you train, 
has actually shown to produce the most anabolic effects afterwards. The reason for this is because the carbohydrates mixed with the protein allows for a very high amino acid uptake into the muscles right when they start getting damaged. Now, this is pretty simple because most people don't like to work out on an empty stomach anyway. However, I know that there's a lot of people out there that like doing intermittent fasting and stuff of this nature. Now, that's more of an individual preference. However, as I mentioned, the studies will show that you will maximize muscle building and muscle protein synthesis by consuming food before you train. And when it comes to post-workout, this might be a little bit more common knowledge amongst most people. Now, there's something that everybody calls the anabolic window and all the bros definitely follow this one. This is essentially known as having that protein shake ready to go and within those 30 minutes of working out, you have to consume the protein or else you wasted your workout. Now that's not necessarily the case. However, the anabolic window does actually exist. It's not 30 minutes, but research has shown that it's up to two hours post-workout. Now, if you consume protein within those first two hours post-exercise from resistance training, you're getting peak muscle protein synthesis. However, if you wait until that two hour mark or later, you're gonna blunt the response to this greatly. You might miss out on maximizing your gains from that workout session. Now, one thing that actually matters, it turns out that research has shown the type of protein you consume will also determine how much you get out of that protein and the signaling of protein synthesis. For example, if you consume milk proteins, they have been shown to increase uptake of protein and the amount of net protein buildup in the body as opposed to consuming something like a soy protein beverage. And this has resulted in study groups to a higher net muscle mass gain. The reason why different proteins matter is because it comes down to the fundamental structure of the specific protein source. So every kind of protein, you've got you know egg protein, milk protein, um, animal protein, soy protein, plant protein, all of those have different fundamental amino acid structures. Those are gonna react differently in the body. Some proteins as well have a complete amino acid profile where others do not. Again, that's gonna also affect how it reacts with the muscle protein synthesis and the maximum protein balance that it can produce in the body. This is also known as protein score. And if you look up protein scores, you'll find the different variation of scores between the different types of protein. These scores are determined based off the bioavailability of the protein, meaning the uptake and the digestion benefits of it. For example, whey protein is the most bioavailable protein to the body, so it's easiest to consume and digest, and the uptake of the amino acids is the greatest. This is why we have whey protein supplements. The type of protein you consume can actually make a slight difference in the net muscle mass gains that you make. Now, in terms of how much protein to consume, research has shown, and we've known this for a long time now, but 50 grams is the cutoff in terms of what maximizes your muscle protein synthesis. Now, this isn't like the myth that says you can only consume 50 grams of protein in a sitting. That's not necessarily the case. You can consume more than 50 grams. However, the point past 50 grams, you're no longer using it for muscle protein synthesis. However, it will stay in the body and be used for other processes. It's not like you just ate protein and wasted it just by eating over 50 grams. Now, talking a little bit more about carbohydrates, we know that protein is number one. Protein is king and what you're after post-workout. However, carbohydrates have been shown to aid in the effects of protein absorption. Okay, so just like 50 grams of protein produces the max results, 50 grams of carbs has been shown scientifically to produce the best results in terms of protein uptake. Uh, the ideal option would be to take something with 50 grams of protein and 50 grams of carbohydrates post-workout and before workout. That is how you absolutely maximize and ensure that you're in a hypertrophic state for around those five hours or so based around your workout. Now, to ensure that you stay in a hypertrophic state for as long as possible, um, the, the next few days is that you want to essentially keep consuming that protein on a regular basis. And this is where meal frequency comes in. And yes, meal frequency does have truth to it, of course. However, the effects on your muscle mass is not nearly as much as they would be portrayed in the fitness industry. So a lot of people claim you should be eating two and a half to three hours apart every meal. And you know what? They're right in terms of maximizing the gains. However, not everybody has the convenience of doing this and they should not worry so much because 
What matters most is what you're doing around the workout, okay? The days to come, if you're in a caloric surplus, that's why we always recommend caloric surpluses because this is what's gonna make sure that you stay in a positive protein balance. If you're in a caloric deficit, in other words, people that are cutting, we usually recommend that you eat a little bit more protein than you're used to when bulking or maintaining because you're, you, tend, you tend to be in a lower protein balance in the body. So in other words, trying to keep your protein intake high throughout the day. Uh, if you're in a caloric surplus, if you're in a caloric deficit, increase it even higher. Doing so will at least retain muscle mass, if not keep you in that hypertrophic state or that anabolic state in order to keep seeing muscle mass and recover better from your workouts as well. Carbs is a very big factor, not only for increasing uptake of amino acids to the muscles, but also to aid in energizing you and fueling you for your workouts, which will increase your performance, which will increase the stimulation of muscle protein synthesis. So in turn, yes, carbohydrates could be looked at as, I'd say maybe just as important in protein, a little bit less, but still very important. And when it comes to fats, it's not generally recommended that you consume lots of fats around your workout. And that's because fats don't have a direct response or direct correlation to muscle protein synthesis and increasing or maximizing it. However, fat is still of course necessary throughout the day in order to regulate and maintain hormonal balance in the body, such as testosterone and growth hormones. So it indirectly of course plays a role. Now I know none of us are looking to cut out fat completely as those old uh, no fat diets have probably dispelled that rumor at this point, but just a heads up, fats around the workout Let's try to stay away from that. And I found also myself, this is a bit of a uh, anecdote, but I found that consuming fat before the workout has actually left me pretty sluggish when I go to work out. The energy isn't as clean, or isn't as, um, it's just not as high quality as a carbohydrate would do with lower fat. And it also slows the digestion of your food, which could kind of keep that food sitting in there a little, which again, is just not a good, uh, it's just not a good thing. We'll keep the fats at bay post-workout and before the workout, but throughout the day, you wanna consume them um, later on or earlier on, depending on when you work out. So that's gonna be it for the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. That's the main thing here. Go ahead and comment down below. Let me know what else you'd like to see. Let me know what other questions or concerns you might have. Also, go ahead and smash that like button if you found this video to be helpful or if you think it'll help somebody else out there go ahead and share it with your friends i want to touch as many people as possible with these videos and help them out that way they don't make the same mistakes that i did or maybe that you did okay and lastly go ahead and subscribe i've got all your fitness related content coming right here in this channel i'm trying to make it like a fitness encyclopedia and i've got tons of good stuff coming soon videos every monday and thursday so be on the lookout and that's it for the video. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you have a great day. I'm out.